today I have a really special collaboration for you. About a year ago, maybe more than a year ago, my friend Alex, who is Paint Crafty Mama on YouTube, and I found this cut file and we really, really liked it. And we decided that we wanted to do a collaboration uh, with this cut file, the two of us using the same cut file. So we both bought it and then life occurred. And we kind of revisited it uh, last month during the uh, Rediscover Your Stash Spending Freeze. And then we decided we were going to get it together. So this is part of the cut file. So the cut file that we purchased was, um, it wasn't from a cut file store. I think it was just like a graphic store. And I'd love to be able to link it for you. But honestly, um, I have since totally lost the link. Um, this is only part of that cut file. There was another part at the bottom that was super funny and adorable and cute. Um, and it said, boy mom surrounded by balls. And then it had all these sports balls. When I tried to cut this cut file, I had the worst time trying to get the whole thing to really cut the way I wanted it to. So I changed my approach. I changed up my idea. I could get this to cut the boy mom part with the little hearts. And so I decided that that's what I was gonna do. I'm just gonna use this part of the cut file. Again, this wasn't a cut file at, per se. It really, it needed a lot of work when I pulled it into my Silhouette software um, to get it to trace and be okay to cut. And then the other part of it, like did not want to cut it all. So it's super cute, but it didn't quite work the way I had planned. So what I decided to do was I cut the boy mom out and then I cut it a shadow layer. And that's the part that I'm going to work with. And since I was just using this part, not the other part with the sports balls and and all that. And I think Alex had better success cutting that cut file. So if you, I'll link her channel below and you can totally go over and check her out. Um, and see uh, the rest of the cut file. And maybe she might even have a link to it. She's a little more organized than me in that respect. Um, so what I decided to do. So I had this boy mom all cut in black with the shadow. And then I decided, was trying to figure out what did I want to use with it. And what I decided on was I decided on this large 8x10 photo of my boys. There's lots of white space here, so I can definitely, like, you know, embellish and, and put the little boy mom across the bottom, and it'll be super cute. So that's my picture. Um, and then I decided to go with the Home Again collection from Cartabella. Um, you can grab this in the cherry on top shop and I will leave a link to it below. Uh, I really love this collection. Again, Cartabella has been knocking it out of the park with their designs recently with regard to me. Like for my personal style, Cartabella has been knocking it out of the park. Um, and I know a couple people have um, really wanted me to to play with more, play some more with this collection. So we're going to play with this collection today. Um, I have also pulled out a stamp set. So and I just got these two colors of Catherine Puller ink from a chair on top, and I want to play with them. So I grabbed this Ulta New Stamp set that has these beautiful leaves, and I'm going to make some embellishments with these leaves. And then um, I have the enamel dots to add some dimension. These two colors of stamps from Catherine Puller, Hot Tub, and Twilight. A couple of the die cuts from the die cut pack. And then what I want to do is um, I want to use this beautiful wood grain as the base for my layout. I want to kind of mat my photo in this. Um, I'm going to stamp with this one. And then I really want to add this to my layout. Um, I'm, it's part of the cut apart sheet. I think it's really cute. I'll read it to you as I start to get in and do my voiceover and what I'm going to play, do and play with all this. But just to give you an idea of what products I'm going to be using and uh, what we're going to be working with today. So let's get creating. And when you're finished watching this video, please head over and give Alex some love too. Okay. So I'm going to start my layout by uh, working with the cut file. So my plan for this cut file, I have the shadow layer and the top layer. And I'm going to grab 
an ink blending tool. This is an ink blending tool from Ranger. Uh, it's not the kind I use a lot, but because I'm going to use pigment ink, I, I can't use my brushes for pigment ink. Pigment ink. So I'm going to use the ink blending tool, and I'm using my favorite white pigment ink, which is close to my heart, white daisy ink. Um, this is probably, this is my favorite white ink um, that I currently have. I have a couple that I have my own I want to try, uh, but this one is really sticky, and it, it does what it needs to do. It is a pigment ink, so it stays wet for a long time, and it requires a little bit of dry time, which is why I'm going ahead and ink blending the letters first. So I'm taking the top letter and I'm just giving them, you can see here, just a quick ink blending of the white daisy ink and that's going to give it this like chalky look. I'm not looking to cover the entire, all the black, just to give it that chalky look. Now I went ahead and I put foam tape behind all of these little letters. I'm just going to pull the backing off and that's going to give them some lift off of the shadow. I think that this worked out really, really well, This having this cut file um, do, you know, have the cut file kind of stand up off of the shadow layer. And I really like the chalkboard look because it, it really is going to coordinate super good, super good. That's a word, you know. Um, it's going to coordinate really well with, <laughs> with my uh, collection, the collection that I've chosen. So the, after I get these all up, I'm going to set it aside because uh, to dry and I wash my hands because otherwise I'm going to end up with white pigment ink everywhere. Um, wash my hands, wash my board, and now I'm going to do the stamping. So this is the first time I'm using these inks. They just arrived to me. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to start to really have some Catherine Pooler inks in my stash. I think I have five or six ink pads now and I'm loving them. The colors are beautiful. I love my Alta New inks too, don't get me wrong, but um, there's some colors that Catherine Pooler has that Ulta New does, that I don't have a kind of same color for Ulta New, and so I think I'm going to grab uh, those ink pads because I really, really like them. They're super easy to use, and they're beautiful, beautiful colors. So I'm going to take all of these leaf canopy stamps from that collection. I'm going to stamp them all twice, and I'm going to do each design once in the hot tub color, and once in the twilight color, which is going to give me these really pretty leafy swags that I can use. Um, and you can see here how beautiful that teal is. Oh my goodness, that teal is stunning. I um, That hot tub color, I actually saw it. I probably would have scanned right past it if I just saw the the top of it, right? Like if I just saw the color in the store, I probably would have scrolled right past it and I would have gone well you know I have aqua -y colors but I saw it on a project and I realized what a gorgeous color it is and I don't have it in anything else and it's such a nice teal color and you know me coral coral colors and these aqua colors are my favorite in fact the next thing I'm getting is some coral and peachy colors from uh, Catherine Pooler so those are the next two colors I already have them picked out <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and get all of this stamping done. If you've never used a Catherine Pooler ink before, go to a cherry on top, get yourself Catherine Pooler inks. They're so fun. Um, I discovered them at Creativation in, last January, or actually the first, like the first January, the first Creativation I was at. She was, it was her first one too, and her inks are beautiful. And those inks, which would now be like two years old, still work. I still have them. So I definitely want to use this cut apart sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off this little piece here. And I've cut that beautiful leafy paper to mount my photo on. And I'm going to go ahead and ink up with some vintage photo distress oxide ink. I'm going to ink up the my background, this wood grain paper. I'm going to ink up the leafy canopy paper. Um, and then we'll continue on creating our layout. So this cut apart sheet, when you cut it directly the way you're supposed to, it becomes four by six. But um, I wanted it to be longer and skinnier and it has a really thick frame around it. Um, and so I'm 
trimming that frame pretty much off. There's still a little bit of it, but that allows me to get it onto my page, which I really, really wanted it to do. And I didn't want it to be, I didn't want that real dark frame on it. I felt like the dark frame would just make it really kind of bulky. Um, and I, I just wanted it to look like the, I just wanted the messaging. I wanted what the, what that sign said to be on my page. Um, because it was just a really good sentiment for the photo and for what the page is all about. So I'm sticking down my cut file now, but you'll notice I'm not sticking it down 100% completely because I'm going to start pulling in those stamped images. I have the coordinating die cuts for those leaf canopy stamps, so I it was really easy for me to just run them all through my uh, Sizzix Big Shot and get them cut easily. Um, I'm not a big fan, well you guys know, like I fussy cut everything. I generally don't do die cuts, uh, the coordinating die cuts for stamps, but sometimes some images um, I do, and this is one of those images, only because you get, if you just stamp these, you're going to end up with like a lot of white pieces, and you're not going to be able to get into all the little corners and nicks and crannies because it's really kind of an intricate stamp. So for stamps like that, I definitely go ahead and just grab the coordinating dies for them. So I have these three little pieces that I want to use. I'm going to use them as bases to kind of then put the stamped images up and around them. I'm going to move them around a bit. I'm not exactly 100% sure where I want them to be. Um, I'm going to move them around till I'm happy with the placement. And this is where I decide to put them. One up in the corner. This one's going to move around a bit, but in the end, it's going to go right there. <laughs> and the dad's going to go at the top. And now I'm just going to take all those stamped images and I'm going to tuck them in everywhere. Um, uh, this is why I didn't put that cut file down. I knew I wanted to have the stamped images kind of interacting with the cut file. So I wanted to get a nice uh, bunch of them around the cut file. Uh, I'm trying not to put the same... So there's some outline images and some filled in images and really my only uh, thing here is I don't want to have like all of the outline images in one cluster or all of the full image or all of the filled in, filled in images, say that 50 times fast, in one area. So I'm going to move them around a little bit so I'm really happy with them. I'm also going to see, let them... <laughs> kind of wander off the edge of the page if that's what they're going to do and then after I've adhered them all down I can just flip the page over and trim off those little edges. But I, now I'm going to grab my Kokoya tape runner which is going to run out of ink. I think it runs out of paint. Tape, paint, uh, paint. It runs out of paint. It runs out of tape. Ugh. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tape all these pieces down now. And the last thing I'm going to do is add some of these enamel dots. So if you bought this collection, if you, I know there are a few of my subscribers that went ahead and got it after I did an unboxing of it. This uh, Home Again by, from Cartabella. Here's another really great layout idea for it. Uh, using all those beautiful papers and really making those papers and some of the cut aparts shine. I would love to be able, I'm hoping I can do a couple more layouts with this because I really, really love this collection. And if I, um, if I have to, I think I have to move on to some new stuff. Uh, but if I do have to move on to some new stuff for my Cherry on Top design team projects, uh, I think I'm going to pull this uh, Home Again collection in for a Kill a Kit. How to Kill a Kit with Style. Um, maybe April. And then we can kind of work more with it. So this would be a really easy layout to replicate. Um, you could create the title piece. You wouldn't have to buy the file that I did. You could just create a title piece that says Boy Mom. Um, you could use any kind of just greenery stamp or greenery die cut or greenery that you have. You could color it up. I mean, leaves are kind of a, a universal thing. You can find a lot of different uh, styles and designs. And that's going to complete this layout. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you will take a peek over at Alex's video as well and see how she used this uh, beautiful 
cut, or this really cute cut file. She, her style and my style are totally different. So she is, but she is so funny and so much fun. So I recommend uh, heading over there. Uh, you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.